Hi, I'm Dr. Selik from San Diego State University, and today I'm going to briefly talk about the establishment of the AKPs, the Just and the Open Party's monopoly over the media sector in Turkey. Uh, in order to understand how it came to control almost 95% of the media, we must uh, look at the developments of the 1990s, uh, which witnessed the emergence of corporate media and uh, media moguls uh, who had interests in other sectors like banking or construction. And uh, here from left to right, uh, you can see the largest media moguls, uh, Aydın Doğan, Mehmet Emin Kara Mehmet, uh, Cem Uzan and Dinç Bilgin. And they were uh, dependent on the governments uh, for large public contracts, for public works, and they used their media uh, to uh, protect their interests. When the AKP came to power in 2002 as an off offspring of the Islamist Welfare Party of Nejmet and Erbakan, uh, they denied their Islamist background and uh, they uh, claimed to be conservative Democrats. And uh, they also claimed that they embraced the democratic principles as a result, uh, their emphasis was on the European Union membership and reforms and uh, stabilizing the economy and privatization was also another important uh, point in their program. And uh, they declared their goal to fight against three whys, uh, namely poverty, corruption and prohibitions and promised to uh, improve the individual rights and freedoms in Turkey. And as a result, they were able to get the EU support and business circles in the country also provided support uh, given the large scale of uh, private station waves. Uh, however, before the elections, one of the media models, Cem Uzan, uh, also established a political party and uh, despite its short life, it managed to get uh, approximately 7% of the votes, uh, but failed to reach the national threshold, 10% threshold, and failed to enter the parliament. And his media had portrayed uh, Erdogan before the elections uh, as an Islamist, and they even published his photographs uh, with Gulbet and Hikmetyar uh, from Afghanistan, who is uh, involved uh, with Taliban. Uh, after the elections, um, due to uh, malpractices and corruption in his bank, in, in his banks, uh, the savings deposit insurance fund of Turkey, uh, TNSF, uh, confiscated his corporations, including his media outlets, and uh, many other uh, moguls who were involved in banking sector uh, shared the same fate, and. At that moment, Aydın Doğan, uh, one of the largest moguls, uh, supported Erdogan because uh, Cem Uzan was one of his rivals. And thanks to his support for the government, for the AKP, he was able to get his share from the private station and he, he was able to purchase the state-owned petroleum company, uh, Petrol Office, and established his own bank. Uh, and in order to appease the AKP, he started to fire his well-known columnists from his papers, like Emin Çelaşan, who was fired in 2007 because of criticizing the government and uh, supporting the secular uh, principles of the constitution. And he was later followed by Bekir Coşkun, Özdemir Ince, and many others. Uh, one important step in establishing the monopoly was change of ownership. This method was widely used and uh, uh, one of the largest group, group, media groups in Turkey, the Sabah ATV group, uh, uh, was confiscated by the TMSF in the past, but later a pro-government uh, corporation, Çalık Group, uh, purchased this uh, media group uh, in 2007 uh, for 1.1 billion dollars and as the group was unable to finance this transaction um, and failed to get uh, financing from the private banks in the country due to lack of uh, their assets and securities uh, the public banks Halkbank and Ziraat Bankası 
uh, were used in the process. They provided the financing and uh, approximately $750 million. And this group uh, came under the government control directly because uh, at that time, its CEO, its, its chief executive officer was uh, Erdogan's son-in-law, later minister of energy and later until recently minister of economy, uh, Berat Albayrak. As a result, uh, it was later from sold by Çelik to Turkaz Media Group and uh, the chief executive officer of this media group, Turkaz Media, is uh, Berat Albayrak's brother, Serhat Albayrak, as you can uh, see in the in the photograph. So, uh, lots of media outlets, uh, newspapers, magazines, and uh, television channels like ATV uh, came under direct control of the AKP. Another method was uh, in eliminating uh, media outlets or silencing them was the uh, use of bureaucratic power. Aydın Doğan started to have tensions with the AKP uh, after appeasing them for a while. And uh, he faced, as a result, uh, a tax fine, which is uh, which was around $2.5 billion, almost equal to all his assets uh, in Turkey. And he started to sell his media outlets one by one. And later he reached an agreement with the ministry and paid 20% of the fine. And in order to appease the government, uh, he used self-censorship in his media outlets. And during the Gezi protests, for example, uh, everyone was expecting the protests to be broadcasted on uh, the news channels, the mainstream news channels like CNN Turk, uh, owned by Aydın Doğan, NTV, and Haber Türk, uh, corporate media outlets. Uh, but while CNN International was broadcasting it live uh, from the streets of Istanbul, uh, CNN Turk unfortunately chose to air a documentary on penguins. Uh, as a result, uh, Turkish people uh, started to use the name the penguin media to these so-called mainstream uh, television channels. So there was not much on televisions, uh, but people used YouTube and Twitter uh, for uh, their purposes, uh, sharing videos and photographs. And uh, an incident, now part of church history, Kabatash incident it is, uh, and I think it should be used in uh, media, faculties teaching media as an example of uh, manipulation and propaganda. Uh, a woman claimed that protesters physically attacked her and did other things. Uh, a group of people, 70, 100 people, and she claimed uh, they physically assaulted her and sexually harassed her and uh, her six months, six month old baby. And all the pro government media uh, used this example to demonize the protesters at that time. Another lie was that uh, they consumed liquor in one of the mosques uh, in order to demonize the protesters again. And these lies uh, were circulated in the media, and pro government media used this. Uh, these lies extensively to to uh, create a negative atmosphere about the protests and protesters. Uh, she claimed that they were uh, half naked, wearing leather gloves and uh, lots of other things. But later, one year later, uh, there was uh, the security camera footage uh, was released, and uh, as a result of the investigation and everyone was able to see nothing happened. She uh, met her husband and they peacefully uh, left the area. But these lies really showed the power of manipulation of the government owned media as they all uh, used these discussions for, for a few months. And finally, following the coup attempt in 2016 with the uh, increasing authorization of uh, the AKP, Aydın Doğan decided to leave the media sector altogether and 
his uh, media outlets were bought by uh, Yıldırım Demirören, uh, a pro-government businessman, and uh, who also later uh, purchased the national lottery as a result of privatization. And he also received financing from public banks. And as a result, Doğan Media became a Demirören uh, media group. And uh, lots of journalists lost, uh, lost their jobs. And uh, the uh, policies of the newspapers and televisions also uh, changed and became pro-government. Another method is using terrorism charges against journalists and columnists. Uh, here you can see Kadri Gürsel, uh, who spent about 11 months in prison, in jail, uh, waiting, awaiting his trial. And uh, he and his colleagues from the daily, secular daily, Cumhuriyet, uh, were later acquitted, but uh, they spent the time in jail. And of course, uh, other opposition outlets like Sözcü, which was established by the uh, columnists and journalists fired by Aydın Doğan. Uh, they, Necati Doğru and Emin Çölaşan, well-known uh, columnists in the country uh, for their support of secular system. They have been charged with aiding and abetting a terrorist organization and they received a uh, three years, six months prison sentence. Now it's at the uh, appellate court and uh, we will see what will happen. And uh, as a result, Sözcü published a special issue to protest the start of this investigation in 2017, uh, freedom, uh, press freedom special issue with blank pages. And as there are opposition outlets like Sözcü, Cumhuriyet, and Birgün, these are uh, dailies, and uh, for example, Telebir is a television channel. They are denied all the financial resources by the government. Uh, even the private sector pro corporations, they are afraid of uh, arousing the wrath of the government, so they do not um, uh, publish their editorials or broadcast their editorials in these media outlets. Or, for example, Turkish Airlines uh, buys all other pro-government uh, dailies, uh, thousands of them every day to offer to passengers. But uh, even if you demand one of these newspapers, uh, it's impossible for you to get them as a passenger in Turkish Airlines flights. So uh, these media outlets are suffering from a financial embargo in addition to uh, political and legal pressures. And as a result, they use the subscription methods and donations uh, like, for example, uh, Telebir TV channel um, uh, uses audience sponsorship to survive. Uh, it's, it has become a popular uh, TV channel uh, in the past, past years. So they are trying to uh, survive despite the financial pressures. But the uh, thing is, uh, they are, these newspapers, for example, are not uh, bought by uh, public agencies like the Turkish Airlines, but people, individuals, uh, buy them. So this is uh, a recent cover from February 19th uh, this year uh, from Birgün. Um, it is uh, actually calling people to subscribe in order to sustain free journalism. Uh, so race is a wonderful person, it reads. And at the right uh, bottom of the page, uh, it reads, to avoid seeing news like this one only one day, today, subscribe to Birgün. And uh, race is Erdogan's nickname, uh, and it means um, leader. So independent media outlets are trying to survive, and uh, they have readers who really uh, pays to buy them and it's the only way they can survive under the current conditions. Uh, while other pro-government uh, newspapers, they are distributed freely because they don't have financial concerns, they are financed through uh, editorials and other uh, support from uh, public agencies and uh, they are distributed for free in many points in cities or uh, like bus stations. Uh, the purpose is to spread the propaganda rather than, uh, you know, uh, financial concerns. Uh, so with the changes in the 
social media laws and increasing authoritarianism, uh, it seems the this year will be uh, harsher for Turkish media outlets. Thank you for your time and patience.